Another week is about to begin, and we are glad to have you with us as we consider the sacrificial love shown to us in Jesus. We are now called to follow where he has led the way, a prospect that can fill us with fear, and one that can bring us also hope and life. Let us worship with the first hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. also with you. Our hymn of praise is Come Thou Almighty King. by the heaviness of God's hand upon him and God's seeming unfaithfulness. God's tough love to Jeremiah says that if he repents, he will be allowed to continue in his strenuous ministry. Jeremiah is strengthened by the simple words, I am with you. The first reading comes to us from Jeremiah 15. O oh Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I'm called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall not stand and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. 
for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in reading Psalm 26 responsibly. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in this nuisance, O Lord, that I may go in possession round your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Paul presents benchmarks for faithful relationships with Christians and non-Christians. Love is the unflagging standard of our, of our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics, but seek to overcome it with good. We are to strive to live at peace with all people. The second reading is from Romans 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. comes to us this day from St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter had confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, 
Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Follow Jesus, who took up the cross for us, and discover Easter's joy. Amen. Peter took Jesus to task for insisting on heading to Jerusalem, where confrontation and death awaited. Pretty gutsy, that Peter. He only wanted to protect Jesus. He wanted to keep him with them. No doubt he knew that he and the rest of the disciples still had much to learn. They were not ready to go it on their own. But Peter, the solid rock that was to provide a firm surface for a strong walkway, had shifted abruptly, becoming a stumbling block instead. Jesus would not be tripped up by Peter's misplaced directive. Just as he had not been fooled by the temptations Satan had issued early on, back in the wilderness after his baptism. At that event, the devil had showed up with three sets of temptations designed to twist Jesus' mission, promising to showcase Jesus' power, but in ways not quite what God had in mind. It was a dare, meant to get Jesus to use his authority for the furtherance of the devil's goals. Instead of attending to the mission of God in the world. But Jesus was not fooled into relieving his own hunger by producing bread from stones. In a short while, he would be feeding hungry crowds instead. Jesus did not use his intimate connections with God to call upon the angels to protect him from physical harm. Instead, it became his personal role to heal and restore the lives of the suffering and marginalized. And the final trap the devil devised had been to take a shortcut to worldly influence and power, to be king of the nations. All it would take was for him to swear allegiance to Satan. Jesus' response, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. The devil had tempted Jesus to set his mind on human things rather than divine goals. Yet Jesus had not taken him up on any of those offers. Instead, he used his position and calling to open the kingdom of heaven to all who would follow him in the way. Jesus refused to turn away from the path he had been given, though it would take him to Jerusalem and the cross. Jesus makes it plain that once again he renounces the devil's temptations. His plan is to continue on the journey that is ahead regardless that the suffering was not his due, but was caused by human sin and hostility in which he had played no part. This was the necessary route because only through the journey of suffering and death would Jesus come to be raised on the third day. The power of God could only be shown in this way to conquer violence and death, thereby proving their ineffectiveness. Jesus reminds Peter that his place is that of a disciple, a student who follows the teacher. 
when he said, get behind me, only from that position of coming after Jesus, taking the path that is being shown to him, can Peter and every disciple fulfill the role that they are given, that we are given. That is what Jesus is talking about as he turned to all the disciples and said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. In spite of the profession that Peter had made, that Jesus was the Messiah, he showed that he put his own thoughts ahead of the way God purposed, and Peter becomes a stumbling block, an obstacle in the mission of Christ. But it is significant to note that Jesus does not kick him out of the inner circle or demote him, using him as an example of what the unacceptable looks like. He remains in relationship with Jesus. Instead, Jesus takes the opportunity to remind Peter of a follower's proper place. There are times ahead for Peter when he will need that reminder and times when he will fail to keep to his correct place. When they arrive in Jerusalem and Jesus is arrested, taken before the authorities for trial and tortured, Peter will deny even knowing Jesus. When Jesus is herded to the place of the skull, Peter is nowhere near the site of crucifixion. Peter's commitment was like the waves of the sea on which he had so briefly walked. One minute it soars high, and the next it crashes down to the depths. Yet Jesus was always there, offering a hand up to save Peter from himself and his fears. Jesus, our Messiah, is with us today as we follow him, even when we are afraid, when the personal cost is high, and when the suffering becomes a heavy, heavy burden. In his book, Leaping, Revelations and Epiphanies, Brian Doyle writes, I know a boy with brain cancer. He's 16 years old. He isn't battling cancer. It's not something to defeat. He is enduring it with the most energy and creativity and patience that he can muster. He says the first year he had cancer was awful because of the fear and vomiting and surgery and radiation and chemotherapy and utter exhaustion. But he says that first year was also wonderful because he learned to savor every moment of his days and because he met amazing people he would have never met and because his family and friends rallied around him with ferocious, relentless humor and because he learned that he was a deeper and stronger and more inventive and more patient soul than he had ever imagined. He also learned about fear, he says, because he was terrified and remained so, but he learned that he can sometimes channel his fear and turn it into the energy he needs to raise money for cancer research. Since he was diagnosed with cancer, he's helped to raise nearly a hundred thousand dollars. Brian Doyle, the author, who himself died of a brain tumor three years ago at the age of 60, learned from his young friend that if we celebrate grace under duress rather than the illusion of total victory, we will be less surprised and more prepared when illness and evil lurch into our lives, as they always will. And maybe we will be braver and better people if we know we cannot obliterate such things, but only wield oceans of humor and patience and creativity against them. No one wants to suffer. 
not even Jesus. It is a common and reasonable reaction to avoid that which is unpleasant, uncomfortable, stressful, and hurtful. Peter wanted to protect Jesus from the suffering that he had indicated was awaiting him. And so Jesus found it necessary to criticize Peter for trying to circumvent the cross that Jesus knew was his, even though it would truly be painful, difficult, and grief-producing. To take up one's cross is not a battle of good against evil. Rather, it is the way God initiates resurrection, bringing it into our lives. The cross becomes the source of new life for us and for others. In dying to ourselves, Jesus enables us to become something more, something greater, as we move from the temporary to the everlasting, from human to divine things. In the enduring of suffering, we become stronger, and when we fail, we become wiser. And always, always, Jesus is there, right before us, leading the way we are to follow. Amen. together. Confident of the care we receive and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, 
the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, the pattern and rhythm of our lives change. May they come into harmony with your creation. Stop the fires and slow the floods and wind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Put an end to violence on our streets and towns. Let protests be done in peace. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding as they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor, vulnerable, and looked down on in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. Especially we ask that you be with Al and Kathy and Jeannie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our ministry into a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We have all been given the role of steward. We are in charge of what we do with our skills, our resources, and our time. Your sharing with this congregation is much appreciated. We thank you. Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Our sending song, is let us ever walk with Jesus.
peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. This is a fifth Sunday, so it's World Hunger Sunday, when we emphasize the needs of the hungry. If you have not yet contributed, you still can. Drop it off, send it in, and we will pass it along. We are continuing to share these recorded worship services on DVD at the sanctuary on Tuesdays at 2 o'clock. So you may attend uh, any Tuesday. The garden crew continues with their harvesting and Holy Communion will be offered on Saturday the 5th at 9.30 for those who have not been able to make the weekday time. And then we will offer it again on Monday, September 14th, the 15th, with the DVD showing, and Wednesday the 16th, and then also 28, 29, and 30 of September. Check the times in your written announcements. <laughs> 